This is Billy Reed for the Kentucky High School Basketball Hall of Fame. And today we're interviewing Coach Dale Mabry from Pleasure Ridge Park High School. And Coach, uh, congratulations on your selection and, and soon to be induction into the Kentucky High School Basketball Hall of Fame. Well, thank you so much, Billy. What an honor this is. I've, you know, I've, my whole life has been about basketball and, and to receive this prestigious award is just puts icing on the cake, Bill. Dale, your, your record is just remarkable. I mean, 840 victories and counting, a 78% winning percentage, uh, 13 state tournaments. Uh, and amazingly, you've had uh, your, your staff, you've been together with these guys for over 30 years. It's, it's just a very unique situation. You know, Larry Kenley, my main assistant, has been with me for 31 years. Uh, he teases me all the time. He said our staff is, is uh, most people change coaching staffs like they change socks, but yeah. uh, we've been very, very fortunate. I've had Larry Kenley with me, as I said, for 31 years and Mike Baxter for 30 years. And uh, it's just like having, you know, their whole staff is qualified to be head coaches and it's just, it's enhanced the continuity of our program greatly. They're just two great basketball minds with me and, you know, we just sound ideals off of each other and, and, and they're just basketball junkies as myself is and uh, it's been a great ride. Dale, uh, I know you spent uh, all your adult life in the South End. Did you grow up in the South End of Louisville? I grew up one mile from Pleasure Ridge Park High School. Did you really? And when they, when it was my turn, my brother and sister went to PRP. And when it was my turn to go to PRP, uh, they built Dawes High School and they changed the district all the way down, I guess about a half a mile from Pleasure Ridge. So I had to go to Dawes. But my father, ever since I was old enough to walk, my father was a great Pleasure Ridge fan, Gary Schaefer fan, and uh, one of his favorite players was Billy Burton. And uh, we never missed a game, and you know he would take me to every game. So I grew up a Pleasure Ridge Park basketball fan. I spent uh, a portion of my life living in the South End. I went to school in the South End from the second grade through the seventh grade. I uh, lived uh, very close to Iroquois Park. and. Uh, South End people, even, even though it's a part of Louisville, they're still kind of a, uh, they have a sense of their own community out there uh, that's really tight-knit, I think. Uh, uh, I've always felt personally that the South End uh, uh, kind of gets uh, the short end of the stick in many ways around here. It seems like there's a lot of attention paid to the East End and to the West End for various reasons, but the, the South End people, I don't think, really get, uh, you know, the, the credit and the recognition probably that they deserve. Is that uh, fair? You know, it's a hard-working end of the town, as you well know. And, oh, sure. And, uh, you know, we believe in setting goals, and we believe in going after those goals. And, you know, you talk about community. I've, you know, I grew up in Pleasure Ridge Park, and, and that community is so tight-knit mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, when Mr. Miller was an assistant principal, Charlie Miller was assistant principal at Dawes when I was over at Dawes. And, and when he became the principal at Pleasure Ridge, I was fortunate enough to come right out of college and have a job. And, uh, you know, he, he brought our, our school environment up to be a true family. And, mm -hmm. and that's the reason Pleasure Ridge has had so much success over the years with all their sports is it's just a tight-knit, true family, a community family that believes in their high school, and it, it's been a unique situation. And that, you, you use the right word there, unique, because I, I think what we've seen over the years in high school basketball with consolidation, um, uh, a lot of schools have lost their identities, a lot of communities have lost their identities, uh, it seems like that the high school has always been kind of the center of community activities, and that's not even the case a lot of places anymore, and, and I hate to see that. Uh, and, and, and even in basketball, Dale, uh, this idea that so many of the players today seem like they have a greater loyalty to their summer AAU team than they do to their high school, and I think that's, a, that's not a good trend. No, it's not, and, and, and I guess not wanting to be so negative on AAU basketball, but it's it's a trend where I think it's eating away, eroding uh, the fundamentals of high school basketball and, and the togetherness of high school basketball. 
You know, in AAU, you have so many all-stars on one team. Uh, they're not expected to play a whole lot of defense, and you know that in AAU. And, mm -hmm. and you know, it just wears away at the fundamentals of what they have to do to be successful on the high school level and, and entering the college level. And I think that's done a lot to erode the, the backbone of high school basketball. I agree with you 100%. But even, even beyond the X's and the O's, to me, and uh, as long as I've been around and traveled around the state, when you were called coach, that meant something. That was a position of respect within the community. And, and the coach always had the players' best interest at heart and the families. Uh, and, and now what you see with some of the summer league things is people getting involved who I don't think has the best interest of the player at heart. And, and I, I hate that for the young people because I have great respect uh, for the high school coaches who, who work so hard for very little remuneration, really. Uh, and I hate to see them getting away from that because I think almost without exception, when I think of the great high school coaches that you're joining in the Hall of Fame, uh, they've had such a positive influence on their community. Well, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, you know, again, the AAU coaches aren't with them, uh, you know, on a daily basis. They're not looking after their academic progress. They're not, you know, looking after their well-being, as you said. I, you know, uh, there's a lot to, say, uh, to be said about high school basketball, and, but I agree with you. It, it seems to be going the AAU way more and more every year, which I think is a, a dangerous situation. Dale, I remember growing up in the South End, have a lot of, Really, it was before uh, even uh, organized baseball. I don't think we had Little League uh, in my part of town until maybe I was 11, something like that. Played a lot of sandlot ball uh, in the summers. That's all we'd do, leave, leave the house in the morning and not come back till it got dark just playing ball. Remember did, those days well. <laughs> did, 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 you have, does that, did you have that kind of a childhood also? You know, yes, I, you know, I played Little League baseball, but my true love was basketball, and if there was a basketball being bounced in the neighborhood, I was going to be there. So yes, I would stay out from in the summertime, stay out from the morning until evening time when it was supper time. And then I would try to get back out after supper time. Yeah. And it, now it's it's not so much that way. Now they, the kids have got so much to do now. They love their video games. You know, they love you know doing this, that, and the other. That's not necessarily the greatest thing for them to do. And um, but. You're right. The the I guess togetherness of our whole neighborhood mm -hmm. was something special to me because you know we would always go from one house to the other house to the other house, and we were always together. You don't see that as much right now. When you were young, were you a, a Cardinals fan or a Kentucky fan, or just didn't really care much? To be very honest with you, my household was a little bit unique, I guess, in some ways. My mother has always been a great U of L fan, and my father, God rest his soul, was a great U of K fan. Uh -huh. So, you know, I was always caught in the middle, but I guess I was brought up more of a U of K fan because I was always with my father, you know, hanging out with my father. So, but I was brought up that way. And you played ball at Dawes High School. Played at Dawes and, and went on to junior college, St. Catherine Junior College. It's now a four-year university, but mm -hmm. I went to St. Catherine and played there. And after those years, you know, I, I, you know, I wasn't going to be the star or the main players. The writing was on the wall as much as I love basketball. But I had a burning desire to stay in basketball. So when I got back to Louisville, I immediately started helping uh, Glenn Colley and, mm -hmm. and Freddie Copas down at Valley as I was finishing up my schooling. and That was a great situation for me there. Was uh, Mr. Cantrell still the principal of Valley then? Yes, he was. Yes, yeah. he was. That, that's a great sports uh, tradition there at Valley, too. Oh, it, uh, fantastic. When I learned so much, my senior year at, at Dawes High School, Leon Mudd came aboard and was the assistant coach to Sam Hosback okay. at Dawes. And Leon Mudd, brought a totally different atmosphere to our team. Uh, and I graduated in 1974, and not a whole lot of teams were pressing teams back then. And Leon came from uh, a, a college background, and he immediately installed the uh, 221 press, and he changed it in various uh, variations. And uh, so I, that really intrigued me a whole lot. And when I left high school, as I said, and, and, and came back to start help Glenn Colley, 
Glenn had a unique situation. Glenn pressed 212. Never saw that before. Uh -huh. And uh, the, what he got out of players was amazing to me. He took, you know, very average talent and just did amazing things with them. I was very fortunate to be helping him when he when he went to the state final and played Ballard in the state final in 77. So I, I, I've just had a world of great background in basketball and, and watching those, you know, Leon Mudd and Glenn Colley, what great basketball minds. And it always intrigued me. I knew that's what I wanted to do. So you're kind of, as you're serving as an assistant coach, you're kind of mentally taking notes about if I ever get to be a head coach, this I'd like to do this or that and that sort of thing. And then Very you, much so. you went back to PRP when, in 79? In 78. 78 uh, okay. In December of 78, I got out of U of L, and Mr. Miller hired me the week I, I got out of U of L, and I was the freshman coach that year. And then I was the JV coach the next year, and from then on, I've been the varsity coach there. It's been, been a fantastic ride. That is really, you are a throwback. It, it, <laughs> it, it, no, it seems that uh, uh, from my early years, I, it seemed like so many of the great coaches uh, just stayed in one spot. They didn't move around. One, one of the other coaches who uh, has over 800 victories, uh, uh, Coach William Keene from Central High School, and he spent his whole career. Uh, but I think about, uh, you know, Letcher Norton at Clark County or John Bill Trivet at Pikeville or Ralph Carlisle at Lafayette. They, they all stayed put, and uh, uh, you don't see that as much. It, it, it's uh, maybe, maybe it's because there's so much moving around in the NBA and the colleges now. <laughs> maybe high school coaches do that too. But uh, have you ever been uh, uh, tempted to leave PRP? Have you ever had any desires to coach anyplace else? You know, I, I, they tease me all the time at school. You know, everybody wants you to embrace change. Well, I, I'm a, I guess, an old school guy. I don't like change. That's why I've never looked to go anywhere else. I was fortunate enough in, in 1986 when Derek Wilcox played for me, I thought was one of the best guards I've I've ever watched, much less had an opportunity to coach. Mm -hmm. When he signed with Vanderbilt, C.M. Newton talked to me a little bit, and they had a position open then. But I am so close with my family. My father was still living then, and, and my mother. And my mother's my biggest fan, and Pleasure Park's biggest fan. And I am so close with my family. I, you know, I, I could never, you know, leave. I just, that's never even been on the on the drawing board. So. Mm -hmm. I started at Pleasure Ridge, and that's that's where I'll conclude. I've I've just so many times, uh, uh, in search of fame, fortune, whatever, uh, coaches are always chasing the next job. But you know, I think there's a lot to be said for knowing who you are, uh, having certain values, and being content. I mean, you know, how much money does a guy need, or how much? <laughs> Uh, glory does a guy need, but it sounds like that you have really pretty much known who you are all along, and you've been really content to be who you are. Well, I was brought up, you know, in a very close knit family, and yes, I, you know, that they've always encouraged me to find my own identity and 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 to go for my father. I was always a firm believer: if you were going to do something, then you do it right to your best ability. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I've always, that's always been in the back of my mind. And uh, as far as chasing jobs where the talent might be here or there, you know, I've always, you know, I, I, they've done so much for me in that community that I feel that I owe them. And mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna do the best I can with the ability that comes through the door. I, I think one of our greatest achievements, you know, people talk about the 13 times we've been to the state tournament. And, but I think one of our greatest achievements has been having a 20 game winning season. I think we're, we've had 28 of those. At one time, it was 18 in a row. Um, you know, that's, to me, that's, that's a testament of a true basketball program and not a basketball team. Consistency. And I, I think mm -hmm. being able to have my assistance with me all those years has enabled us to have that type of a program, and I'm just so very proud of it. Coaches at the big time college ranks have become more CEOs almost than teachers. 
Uh, Bobby Knight always told me that he considered himself to be a teacher. And there were some faculty members at Indiana when he was there who, who claimed he was as good a teacher, a professor, as there was on campus. Do you see yourself like that? Do you see yourself as a teacher? Well, I do view myself as, as, a, as the gymnasium, as a classroom. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm, I'm a detailed person. I like to be very, very organized. Um, but, and I, I'll throw it back to my assistants again. You know, we've all got our strengths and we all use each other as sounding boards. And I think being able to do that and to have people around you like that, I think, you know, you can bring out the best in the young men that we've coached over the years and put them in the situations where they can be successful. Um, you know, I've just been very fortunate. Dale, the, obviously when you're a high school uh, basketball coach, the Sweet 16 is the ultimate goal. You've been uh, in the Final Four of the Sweet 16 seven times. Uh, in 1986, I think, is when you reached the final game for the first time. Is that right? Against Pulaski County. You played Reggie Pula Hansen. Reggie Hansen. <laughs> and doggone, I look at this score, and it was 47 to 45. They beat you. By, but what did they – did they hold the ball in that game, or did you hold the you ball? No, no, we, we weren't a team. That was with Derek Wilcox and Desmond Porter and Brian Joyner. And, um, no, we, we were a pressing team, and, and – very disciplined on the offensive end, but not holding the ball. I think they held it for two or three stretches for a good while. They held it for a couple of minutes at the end um, to get that last shot. Derek Wilcox, we ran a play for Derek, and he came off the baseline and came into the lane. I can see it like it was yesterday, Billy. <laughs> and he missed about a six-foot jumper in the lane, hit, hit the back of the rim and came off, and that would have been for the win. And then they got the ball and went down. And uh, the uh, what's his what's coach's son's name? Fraley. What's uh, yeah. his son hit yeah. the hit the shot yeah. uh, to beat us? So you know that was very very disheartening. I mean, it's that was the first time there for us, and and I guess it was all new to us. It never gets old. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> but uh, that was that was disheartening for that to happen. But. You know, we came back in, in 89 and got the job done by only two points again. So. <laughs> against, uh, against Wayne, Wayne County. County, yeah. <laughs> Rodney Woods does a great job. And uh, Andy Pinnock was the MVP of that state tournament. Andy, uh, funny story, Billy. <laughs> two days before we left for the tournament, we were in practice in a very seldomly used substitute, a young kid, matter of fact, freshman. Andy went up for a layup in practice. And he slid up under Andy, and Andy came down on his ankle. It's the worst ankle I've seen since I've been in coaching. I mean, that thing was huge. Wow. And I thought, there goes all the dreams we've had for this year. There it goes. And Andy was a warrior. I mean, probably the best shooter I've ever coached. And as far as a hard-nosed young man, mm -hmm. second to none. And Andy went to all that therapy and, and worked and worked, and his ankle was still in bad shape. And he went to the state tournament, and you wouldn't have known he had, a, had an ankle like that. It was amazing performance wow. for him all the way through. Hmm. Dale, I've heard people say that sometimes when you set your, your sights on a goal, when you finally achieve it, there's almost a sense of disappointment that you felt like you you know, you should feel more. What, what, uh, what did you feel like when you finally reached the top of the mountain? It was amazing to watch those young men on the floor celebrate. Uh, totally amazing. I can, I can remember to this day, Buddy Fott was a teacher at our school and his son, Sean Fott, played for us, started with Andy at the guard position. And they came down and took a shot that could have won the game for them. He took a three-point shot that could have won the game for them, and it came off. And Sean Fott was only about 5'8". Uh -huh. And Sean Fott came out of that lane. He waited out of that lane with the ball. And as the clock was just ticking down and that horn was sounding, Sean just took off sprinting down the floor holding <laughs> that ball. It was just an amazing feeling. But to watch those young men, you know, as I get older and, you know, you know, you used to think, wow, what an accomplishment for me. But as I get older, that, that doesn't matter. Any of that doesn't matter. It's just when I watch those young men, it's just, it's just melts your heart. 
I, I, I would think that uh, uh, one of the great things would be when you take the trophy back to your home community. Uh, what was that like for you to take that big trophy back to Pleasure Ridge Park? An amazing experience. When we got off the expressway, they had a fire engine, engine waiting for us. You know, the kids got on the fire engine. We went down Greenwood Road. You know, the community, I don't know how many hundreds of people were there. They were in the parking lot. And we turned in that parking lot. It was something else. Just something I'll never forget. That's got to give you chills. Oh, it just does. Thinking about I'm it. getting them right now. Yeah. <laughs> And again, that's a, you know, a community like Pleasure Ridge Park. Um, a lot of hardworking people don't have life easy in many cases. So a moment like that, I think, would be especially meaningful to them. Uh, the, the sense of pride is probably something you could just feel. Oh, definitely. We were the first team to win a state championship at Pleasure Ridge in, of any sport. And it, uh, I just think it uplifted the whole community. The whole school was on cloud nine. It was just an amazing experience. Of course, Bill Miller's got about six or seven of them now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you went, uh, you went back to the championship game a few years later against Breckenridge County and uh, had, a, had a seven point loss this time. Yeah. What do you remember about that game? Well, it was a tough game. Breckenridge County was the Cinderella team of that tournament. And 99.9% .9 of those people in Rupp Arena were from Breckenridge County. <laughs> it was an eerie feeling a little bit. Uh, they could shoot the heck out of the ball. Smart, just a great group of young men. We started out with a pretty good lead. And then my two big boys got in foul trouble. And then it got close for the rest of the way. And uh, they jumped out to that lead there coming down the stretch. And they were hard to, you know, they moved the ball so tremendously. Um, and it was hard to come back once they got that five-point lead on us and it ended up being seven. But once they got that five-point lead, it's tough to get that ball back from that group. Dale, you've had uh, 33 years in now, uh, 840 victories. You've accomplished about everything a high school coach can accomplish and a lot more. You've been the National Coach of the Year. You've sent more than 100 young men to play college basketball. And, uh, over uh, 34 or so of those in Division One, and 27, I think, 20 win seasons, uh, six 30 win seasons, and yet you still are going. What What do you see in the future for Dale Mabry? I don't know. You know, it has to come to an end one day. But I, it gives me so much energy when I walk in the gym and those young men are there. You know, I don't know what life would be like without basketball. That's all I've ever known. It's mm -hmm. all I've ever wanted to do. Um, you know, so if I, the day I walk out at gym, I, it, it's going to be a scary feeling for me because I'm, I'm not sure I'm equipped to do much else, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a great ride, a great ride. Well, you can be PRP's number one fan, I guess. I, I guess I, and I always will be. Yeah. You know, I've never cared to venture out of there. It's just a special place. Is there anything left that you haven't done that you'd like to do? You know, I, right now I'm at the stage, and I guess a lot of the older coaches are, you know, we're, we're just living for the young men. You know, uh, you know, you used to celebrate when you won the district or won the region or, you know, had a great state tournament run. Now I have fun watching them celebrate. So it's, you know, it's, I guess that's my goal now is just put them in the best position they can be to be successful. Young men on the floor, off the floor, and, and as they graduate from high school, moving into college. Dale, the, the, the way this works with the uh, Kentucky High School Basketball Hall of Fame is that uh, in 2018, it's going to be the 100th anniversary of the state tournament. And by that time, we will have an inaugural class, really, of 100 uh, coaches, uh, boys, girls, representing 100 years of high school basketball. And wow. you're, you're now a part of that. What uh, what would you tell? We're this will be on display. This interview will be available in the Basketball Hall of Fame when it's built down in E Town. What would you uh, uh, tell uh, maybe young people that might have an interest in coaching? Uh, you know, what uh, uh, would you would you encourage young men to seek careers as teachers and as coaches? Well, you know. I, 
I guess I, I would suggest follow your dream like I did. If basketball is something that's very important to you, uh, what a career it's been, what an exciting career it's been. Um, but if you're getting into it with, for the money situation, I, I would stay as far away from that as you could stay away from it. But knowing that you're a teacher already and knowing anybody that applies for a basketball job has a love, great love for basketball, uh, they're in for an exciting ride. Just be ready to work hard. Uh, there's, there's no substitute for hard work, not at all. And I was brought up like that, and, and I'm a living testament, I guess, to say, you know, through hard work, you know, great things can happen. Dale, in closing, is there any one that you'd like to mention or thank or single out uh, that I haven't uh, mentioned? Anything you'd like to say that I haven't brought up? Well, I, you know, again, I'd like to thank my family. My mother and my father have been a great inspiration to me all my life, uh, encouraged me to follow my dreams. And, um, you know, they were the reason I was able to do all this. Mm -hmm. uh, been my biggest fans all my life. Uh, gave me the support uh, that I had to have. And then um, Mr. Charlie Miller, Charles Miller, uh, state representative now, you know, was a tremendous principal. Mm -hmm. You know, I thank him for giving me the opportunity. Uh, what, a, what a ride it's been. Uh, when he hired me, when I was 25 years old and there were a, a lot of individuals that told him I was far too young to mm -hmm. take on a program like Pleasure Ridge and he believed in me. And uh, what, what a great honor that's been to, to work for him and, and to have his belief in me. And uh, then Mr. David Johnson, that's principal of Pleasure Ridge now. Um, you know, a lot of times when new principals take over, mm -hmm. you know, they change staffs all together. You know, and he believed in me, and I would like to thank him. It's just been a tremendous ride. The community has been fantastic. Uh, I just don't know where my life would have been without the support of the Pleasure Ridge Park community. Dale Mabry, Hall of Famer, thank congratulations you. and thank you very much. Thank you.